Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop. I know you can't see my face, but I'm just trying a little bit different angle here tonight. I did get my Philco 7070 signal generator. I have unboxed it. I haven't unpackaged it yet. I'm getting ready to do that. So I figured I would make a video. You can't see my ugly mug. I got to say, the seller on this did me right. It was $18 shipping. This thing weighs almost 18 pounds. It was in a huge box filled with bubble wrap and he shipped it FedEx. It had to have cost, unless he has a contact at FedEx, it had to have cost more than he charged me for shipping. So, I can't complain about that. I got a good deal on the on the actual device, $35, and then $18 to ship it. And I think that that was very fair. So, that doesn't happen very often in this day and age. But sometimes we get lucky and we have honest people that are willing to do stuff like that. I gotta let you know, this is definitely larger than I thought it was going to be. Definitely larger than I thought it was going to be. Which is pretty cool. I'm getting there. And there it is. Big monstrosity. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Attenuator is very stiff, barely wants to turn. Multiplier, that turns easy enough. It has an output here that typically would have had, from what I could do the research online, actually I've, I did research online and I've got a 16 page manual that I downloaded on it. And it actually originally had a, a connector that plugged into this. It looks kind of like the connectors that are used on, you know, the older meters and stuff, but it's not because that's like a pin terminal. But what this was, was it went into a Bakelite box that had a ground terminal and an antenna terminal on it. So I think what I'm going to do is put a BNC jack on this unless I can come up with the actual end that goes on here and uh, put some shielded cable together and, and make my own leads for it but uh, we'll see how that goes after I get it all done I, I might try and see if I could there was one actually on eBay like this that I was trying to bid for that actually had this with it unfortunately I got overbid and was not willing that, that guy wanted forty one dollars to ship his and I wasn't gonna spend more than sixty dollars when I knew that I could get this one so this one was a buy it now so anyway th this is a very good manual it tells you how to use it it tells you all about it it has the schematics for it in it it has the layout it has the parts list like I said it's, it's quite a few pages long and um, the calibration all in there so that's going to be very helpful in this as a blue pilot light band switch A through F and that feels pretty decent got the modulation that feels pretty decent this feels very smooth it's also slipping though I can tell that so we'll have to get that apart and get that lubricated cleaned up but 
I think this is going to clean up very nice. Um, it's missing most of the screws. That's not a good sign. It appears somebody would have been into it already at some point in time. So let's take another look at some other parts of it. There's a side. That's kind of nice. It actually has feet on the back side as well as the bottom. So you can set it either way. It's like a hammer paint. It's like a, a blue hammer paint. I will probably strip this and try and replicate that blue hammer paint. It looks like this faceplate may be separate from the faceplate, and I think it is from what I can see here. When I got this, I was actually going for a Philco 077 signal generator that I ha had seen Larry at Back to the Future Radios storing, and I fell in love with the appearance of it. And once he had it done, and I saw how accurate it was, I really fell in love with it. And I see that Dodger's photobombing my video. But, um, Anyway, I didn't have any when I went out to eBay, but I saw this and I decided, you know what? It was made by Philco for use by their technicians, so hopefully it's going to be just as accurate. I'm going to see if I can restore this thing to, so it looks very close to what it originally did, hopefully. And um, we'll go from there. I'm take some of these screws out and see if we can get it up a little bit and... Take a look inside, see how molested it appears to be. Operates on 117 volts. Actually 110 to 120 is what it operates on according to the manual. I'm just sitting there looking at the face on it. And uh, of course it's right here on the face of this as well. It's scary when you see how many screws it should have and that they're all missing. All right, let's see what we got here. Something fell inside. You know what? That's interesting. That's cool. It actually has, I don't know if you're seeing this, because I probably got the thing in a way where you can't see it. It actually had a cord that plugs it in inside that box. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's see what we look, we can see what this looks like. All right. Well, I gotta say it doesn't look molested from what I can see. I have to get in there and compare everything to what it's supposed to have, but you know what? It, it actually looks pretty nice. It looks very original. I see some, some wax caps and Electrolytic in here. It's not all corroded looking. This might actually clean up pretty good. I'm pretty excited. All right, well, I think that we'll call this it for this one because this was just an introduction. The um, Coil wires aren't all hard and hard as a rock, so that's a good thing. But um, we will um, come back when we're ready to get started on this thing. I gotta go out of town for a little bit, so it'll be after that before I can get back onto it. Excuse me, I'm still enjoying my cappuccino. So, from Greg at Greg's Vintage Workshop, thank you for watching my unveiling of the Philco 7070. 
This is about a vintage of 1947-ish. And um, we will be getting started on this in the very near future. So if you're not a subscriber, hit like. If you like this video, and subscribe. And I thank you for watching Greg's Vintage Workshop.